Linda, what are your thoughts on the two charter school proposals currently before the board? Will you support one or the other, and why or why not? Well, uh, Caprice uh, Pitcher, who's been doing the, um, who's created the information and the massive amounts of reading that, that we've all done to um, learn about this new charter school proposal, has really been very um, prepared and thorough in her, just, you know, in bringing the information to the board. Um, I do have some, it's a very complicated pr proposal that she's giving us. <coughs> I do have questions, I have two main questions uh, that I still haven't resolved in my mind, so I, I can't say if I approve it or not. Um, the two questions are, one is finances. I, I'm not sure that, I haven't, I haven't been convinced yet that that the school's going to be able to support itself financially because it's going to be a public school. Um, actually, I have three, three issues. The uh, issue of reaching out to all the student population, the special education, the English language learners, uh, the low socioeconomic students. I see those. Um, I have questions as to whether this particular charter school, particularly the, the one that's going to be in a, a specific location, um, I'm not sure that those people, that population is going to be well served. And of course, we want all public schools to serve all students. And I have questions about the teaching strategies. Um, as my, in my many years of teaching, I was involved with project-based learning, which I feel is a terrific way to learn. However, there were four of us that designed the program, and we delivered it with the four of us together. And I think that having one teacher do that is, is going to be much more complicated. So again, I haven't decided. And uh, again, I will uh, rely on our superintendent, uh, uh, Mr. Banker. Would you like to tell the folks when that meeting will be up? So if they're sure. Uh, very specifically, when Tim and I met today and he showed me that question, uh, I, I sort of forecasted the exact answer that Linda just gave. Because that, that's exactly the right answer. Uh, the, the technical calendar is such we started working on this back in the spring through the summer. Uh, it came to the board in a draft form in August and then into sort of early September. Then we started a three a three board meeting analysis. September 18th, actually Caprice, uh, who is the primary petitioner, she lives in Ojai, uh, made the presentation of a voluminous document, uh, really of two different, uh, very different uh, charter schools that she's proposing. <laughs> made it clear at that meeting between the two of us, she and I were working together, uh, that we would take 60 days from that time forward, approximately 60 days, so that at the November 13th meeting, the board uh, is scheduled to make a decision uh, on the two uh, charter school petitions following my recommendation to them. Uh, on October 16th, the midpoint, uh, we uh, had a very, very thorough, long conversation among uh, the board members, Caprice, and her council, who comes from the Los Angeles area on, uh, on charter schools, and it was specifically designed to do that. It was a conversation. So when Linda talks about issues that are yet to be determined, that are outstanding, they're not only outstanding for her and Fane and Ricky and Pauline and Kathy, but they're outstanding for me. And I've been working on this uh, multiple hours, many hours a week, along with Danny Fusateri. So as I said to Tim, it's a legitimate question to ask where the two board members are on the issue, but it certainly would be premature to ask the board member how he or she would vote on it now because we're not anywhere near done with the analysis. Uh, and I haven't made my recommendation, and it'll be based on my recommendation that they will either uh, agree with me or not. I guess I should have set the time limit before I asked. <laughs> <laughs> you asked, I asked. I did, absolutely. As, as, as the mystery knows, you get a full answer. I think the answer's in November meeting. <laughs> in November. Um, okay, the, uh, the next question uh, will be for Thane. Although the vote was largely symbolic, explain why you abstained from the recent board vote in support of Proposition 30. Right. Um, I, you know, and I, I hope that uh, everybody reads the Ojai Valley News. Um, because there was really good coverage of, uh, of my answer there. Uh, and, and I think it explained it fairly well. I, I'd like to quickly explain uh, that uh, 
I fully support the teachers, I fully support the staff, and I want the best for our students here. I, I feel that uh, we're in a hostage situation, that uh, essentially Governor Brown has taken your favorite teacher and is holding a gun to their head and is saying, um, pay up or we're going to cut your budget in the middle of the year. Um, in, in that case, I think absolutely we need to get the money. And I, I plan to vote yes on the proposition. The issue, however, is do I endorse the situation? And I absolutely don't endorse the situation. I found my chart. Um, <laughs> California state revenues have been increasing for the last several years. Per pupil spending has been decreasing. And, and that's just outrageous. Regardless of Prop 98 or any other laws, we have sneaky politicians in Sacramento. And they're finding ways to subvert, to not give money and funding to schools. And we need to do whatever we can to stop that. So am I, am I for uh, getting the money and, and paying our teachers? Absolutely. Am, am I for encouraging this kind of activity in Sacramento? Absolutely not. And read the Ojai Valley News for the full report. <laughs> and I'll second that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, question number uh, four uh, for Kevin. How many OUSD, Ojai Unified School District board meetings, uh, have you attended in the past two years? And what, ha what else have you done uh, to be prepared for a seat on the board if you are elected? I've attended two meetings in the last two years. I've read all of the board agendas and all of the board minutes. Uh, I have met with Hank, I've met with Danielle, I've met with several of the principals, I've met with lots of stakeholders in our community from diverse perspectives and people who in the past have taken some very strong positions with respect to certain school issues to just get as much of a, of a diverse uh, understanding of, of the issues as I could get. What I've probably spent the most time doing is really trying to understand our budget and some of the issues that are um, that we have to deal with in our budget. One issue in particular that I um, wanted to understand was something that was identified by the Ventura uh, County um, Grand Jury uh, several years ago. Some of you may know about it. It was a report issued in 2010. It was called The Elephant in Our Classrooms. And the elephant in our classrooms is that uh, school districts like Ojai in fact, OI is one of the more prominent ones, um, have made promises to the classified and certificated employees that after they retire as early as the age of 55, for up to five years, we'll provide them with full medical benefits. And as a result of that, um, we currently are looking at a liability that's estimated because it's only able to be really estimated. They, have, they use actuarial work to estimate these because they can't tell exactly how many people will retire when and how much the insurance will cost and so forth. But it's, a, it's currently estimated to be, I'm guessing, well, I think the last actuarial was 2011. It was $8.5 million. Uh, presumably it's more now. Um, the grand jury recommended that the school district deal with it. Uh, start paying it off. Uh, do something to acknowledge that we've got this huge bubble hanging over our heads. But what our school district, I believe, has done so far is just to do something called pay-as-you-go, which is you just, as people make uh, claims against this benefit, we pay for them. Um, and I think it's a major issue coming down the road. Okay. I'd like to take an opportunity, another minute. Maybe a second. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one second. Okay. I, I want to take the time because I think somebody needs to stand up for the people who weren't on the panel. And, and the teachers are not on the panel. We're, we're, we're cutting their days, we're cutting their time, I, we're putting so much pressure on them and they're going out of their way to put in the time necessary I, to teach our students and to actually increase our API scores. Um, and, and I think that's just outstanding, but to try to again, create an issue about the few years that we're giving them health benefits between the time they retire and 65, I think is really divisive and another wedge topic. 
that, that I just think is wrong. Pay as you go is an accepted form of doing it. And frankly, with the budget, we have a choice of paying current expenses or um, paying a lot of money to add these extra costs. And we've decided to uh, to pay everybody as much as we can now. And I think that's the appropriate thing. I'm sorry, time is up. I'd like to offer something also. Okay. Um, Good. When, a, when a teacher retires, it's usually when they reach 60, 62, something like that. And they're at the top of their pay scale. So when they retire, even though they're getting their benefits, and, um, and remember, teachers are also paying into the state teacher's retirement system. Teachers do not get Social Security at all in California. So they're paying part of, the, part of the money that goes into the um, state teacher's retirement comes out of a teacher's paycheck. It's automatically, automatically deducted. Then the district contributes a, a portion, proportion also. And then the money is invested by the state teacher's retirement, and then when the teacher retires, they get that back. The district also provides health, health insurance until they're 65 when they're eligible for Medicare. So a teacher at the top of their game, it's retiring at 62, is going to be probably making $75,000, which sound, may sound like a lot of money, but really, in today's economy, that's not. Um, a new teacher coming in is going to probably make $40,000. So, uh, I'm sorry to yeah, the district is saving money by letting people retire and encouraging them. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Anyone else? I'll use my last minute. Uh, so, go ahead. so, I hope it's clear that my concerns that I'm raising are not, these are not fait accompli. I'm not saying that there's an answer that's readily apparent. Certainly I'm not criticizing our teachers. What I'm looking at, however, is an eight and a half million dollar bill that's sitting on our books that, that, that reasonable, rational people like the grand jury of Ventura are saying, hey, you need to deal with. What I, I'm, I'm gathering that there's nothing to discuss. Put me on the board, I think there will be something to discuss. Nothing wrong with having the conversation, I would think. Okay, thank you. Continue. One more. Do you want to use it? Yeah, another one. Okay, I second. just want to comment about the grand jury. They also recommended that uh, we, in Ventura County, we, we uh, create massive school districts consolidating school districts like Santa Paula, Ventura, Ojai, Oxnard, all be one giant school district. I think we can look at LAUSD, which is a giant consolidated school district, and see how well that consolidation works. You know, small school districts serve their students much in a much more efficient and much better way. Tim, if it's all right, Linda can have one of my. <laughs> you know, but unfortunately, it's not. I'm sure we go. And you might want yours before the night is over, so go ahead and say them. Uh, actually, question uh, number four for you, Bill. Uh, how many Ohio Unified School District board meetings have you attended in the past two years, and what have you done to prepare for a seat on the board if you are elected? I'll try and keep it as brief as possible. I've only made a couple of board meetings over the past 10 years. Uh, they are the same as board meetings I attended in Philadelphia and in other school districts in Pennsylvania when I was living there. Um, my reason for being here tonight is actually because of the number of years I have in public education and the fact that I'm not looking to add a bulleted item to my um, resume. Uh, as Linda pointed out, 62 to 65 is when you re retire. I got an interesting call from CalSTRS Retirement Group for the Teachers last February reminding me, Mr. Hassell, you will be um, 70 and a half on <laughs> June the 18th, and if you don't retire by then, you could start to lose some of your benefits. I shot right up in the air and thought, oh no, I can't have that happen. And since I was preparing to uh, retire anyway, I did. So some of us go beyond that. Uh, take 20 years old for student teaching and 70, that's 50 years in the field. Why do I want to be a part of the board? I have something to offer you. And it comes in a large number of years. <clears throat> An ability to listen and a willingness to try to get things done.